Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We have a special guest speaker here tonight. Brother Stump is coming to teach or preach the word here today. And I asked, uh, I told him I wanted to introduce him today because I wanted to just remind everybody and, and tell anybody that is connected with this, uh, happy Veterans Day. I know we have some veterans here, and I appreciate your service. Amen. Why don't we give our veterans a hand? Thank you so much for all you've done. Hallelujah. Amen. I guess I've got a favorite veteran, and that would be Brother Stump. Thank you so much, Brother Stump, for your serving during the Vietnam War. And uh, he served in Alaska, up in the Aleutian Islands, and he's been cold ever since. Hallelujah. Brother Stump, would you come in your amazing mask and bring us the word of the Lord? Let's worship God together. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we go ahead and just make Jesus comfortable and just praise him one more time? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you in this place tonight, Lord. And we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Jesus, for the things that you've done and for the things that you're going to do, Lord. Oh, God, show your presence is in this place tonight, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is comfortable receiving praise. The angels praise him night and day. Amen. The earth. Amen proclaims his glory and his honor. What a mighty God we serve and to think that on this Wednesday night on Veterans Day, November the 11th, that Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the God of heaven, would come down into this place because he inhabits the praises of his people. I'm glad that he's here tonight, aren't you? Could we just praise him one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. Turn to somebody, smile through them through the mask. We're going to believe that you're smiling, not sticking out your tongue, <laughs> and you may be seated tonight. We never know what you're doing, and uh, Pastor Gillis has said it many times. Uh, praise the Lord. But I'm glad that you're here tonight. Once again, may I also offer my uh, 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 gratitude for all of our veterans who are here, those who may be seeing this and looking tonight. You made America free. And you keep us free, and we appreciate all that you have done and all that you will continue to do in the future. Amen. Um, I want to say tonight as we get started that uh, Sister Gillis, First Lady Gillis, was the past few days and has been doing our devotion in and out of season. Well, I want to confess to you tonight that I've never been more out of season than I am right now. <laughs> uh, Timothy said, be instant in season and out of season. And uh, uh, Pastor Gillis asked us to teach, and we're just delighted to do that. But as we get older, and some of you already know this, your thoughts tend to wander, and you get mixed up. So just bear with me, and uh, just keep smiling behind the mask, and I'll know that you're with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's just good to be with you tonight, and if the Lord would help us, uh, there's probably nothing new that I'm going to say tonight, but if God would help us, we'd like to maybe say it in a fashion that it would brand itself uh, into our soul, that would burn itself into our heart, uh, that we could take it and make it a part of our arsenal. Amen. Because in these last days that we're living, we really don't know what's going to happen next. We're living just that close to the coming of the Lord. And I want to make sure that I am ready. I'm not only ready, but I want to be positive that I'm using everything that God has given me. Amen. To fight the onslaught of the devil, to fight evil, and to make sure that when the trumpet sounds, amen, I am right before the Lord. Don't you want to be right tonight? Before the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So tonight, if you'll bear with me for a few moments, amen, I would like to uh, leave with you tonight uh, three words. And uh, like I say, this is nothing new. Uh, uh, most of you, you know, it's like preaching to the choir. Most of you can quote the Bible from beginning to end anyhow. But once again, I hope that when we finish this, it will burn itself into our heart and that this will become a reality that we can pray it every day. We can say it every day, carry this banner and carry this flag and carry this battle cry, if you would, because it's one of the battle cries that the church needs in our last days that we are living. So if you'll bear with me just a little bit tonight. Amen. Uh, these, by the way, these are not the three words I want to leave with you tonight, but this is Vini, Vidi, Vici. Any it, it, Italians here tonight? Uh, anybody? 
Italian. Okay, not too many are, don't speak Italian. Vini, vidi, vici, which means, I know you know, I came, I saw, I conquered. And these words were actually written, amen, by Julius Caesar in 47 years before Christ. And they were written in regard, amen, to a battle that he had just won. He said, I came, I saw, and I conquered it. And this was his battle cry. And tonight, if the Lord would help us, I would like to talk about the battle cry of the church. I want to leave three words with you tonight that are the battle cry of the church. But just before we get into that, let me say tonight that throughout the centuries of time, humanity has been or has responded to great battle cries and to great sounds. And some of those tonight, let's look at just a few of them quickly, if we may. Uh, uh, You may have seen pictures or read books about the Vikings, and, and the Vikings had this horrible sounding beat. It was a drum. And when villagers heard that drum meeting, they knew, beating, they knew that the Vikings were coming. They were coming to rob. They were coming to destroy. They were coming to create fear. And so that was their battle cry. That was their battle sound. They would beat that drum, bang, boom, boom, boom. And they would hear that afar off and they would run to their tents. They would get prepared because the Vikings were coming. That was their battle cry. They knew it wasn't the ice cream man. It was the Vikings and they were coming to destroy them. And so they got prepared. But that was their battle cry. We also look down to the corridors of history. And we can uh, look at perhaps the medieval times. And uh, 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 King Arthur had a round table. And they would gather around this round table. And all the knights would be there because everybody was equal. It was a round table. They had Excalibur. And Excalibur was a, a, a battle cry, if you would. It was a very special sword. And this sword was used in honor. It was used in loyalty. It was used to defeat the enemy. Uh, as we move on just a little bit, perhaps during the resolution or during the revolution, as you may remember, a man by the name of Patrick Henry, and he said those famous words, give me liberty or give me death. Amen. That was his battle cry. Give me liberty or give me death. If I can't have liberty, then I don't want to live. That was his battle cry. We look at the Boston Tea Party and their battle cry was no tax without all you young students tonight, no tax without representation. That was their battle cry. And they went to war with that battle cry. They emptied the tea in the harbor and they fought because they didn't want anybody to tax them unless they had some kind of representation. And down through the quarters of time, men and women, amen, have responded to battle cries. They have responded, amen, to their cause in order to fight the battle, something to carry them through. We think of the pioneers. And perhaps uh, 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 they had several battle cries, if you would. One of the battle cries that they cried was, Go West, young man. Go west. Amen. There's gold in them there hills. Go west, young man. Go west. And so many pioneers, uh, they would pick up their stakes where they lived, whether it be in the, the cities, the, uh, 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 the modern cities of their day, and they would get a stagecoach or a, 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 a wagon. They'd fill it with all their belongings, and off they would go from maybe from the east to the west, sometimes three to four months through snow. Amen. Through everything else, they wanted to go west because there was a future. Uh, there was land. There was a freedom there. So it was go west, young man. Go Go west. Amen. We think of, during the early years, we think of the battle cry that says, remember the Alamo. Anybody ever read about the Alamo? David Crockett and Jim Bowie and all those famous people. Remember the Alamo. Uh, amen. How the Mex- how approximately 100 men withstood thousands of Mexicans as they came to try to take the Alamo and to take over Texas. But they stood, and every one of them died, including David Crockett and Jim Bowie, or so the books tell us. Uh, every one of them died because it was the Alamo. And for years and years after that, they would say, remember the Alamo. Remember what happened there. We'll never forget. That's our battle cry. Amen. We hear the battle cry, remember Pearl Harbor. And none of us were there. But what a time that must have been. And even just reading the books and even just hearing it and seeing some of the documentaries about it, even just kind of set us on edge and remember Pearl Harbor, the men and women who lost their lives there, the veterans, if you would, the men and women who served, they lost their lives. And so remember Pearl Harbor. And when we think about Pearl Harbor, sometimes something boils up within us and we say we're going to protect America. Just recently, not too long ago, uh, amen, we said, uh, or, or rather, uh, uh, Douglas MacArthur said, I shall return. I shall return. Or as Arnold would say, I'll be back. He said, I shall return. And then we think of 9-11, we shall never forget. 
Amen. We shall never forget what happened at 9-11. And throughout the course of history, amen, there have been slogans, if you would, battle cries that have inspired men and women that have pushed them forward when they didn't think they could go any, any further, have helped them uh, able to maintain and even gain victory in their lives and gain victory for their nations. Uh, we think of the, Marine, of the Marines tonight. God bless the Marines. Uh, amen. Their battle cry is Semper Fi, always faithful, leave no man behind. And they live by that. It's their battle cry. It's their motto. It's burned into their soul. Uh, amen. We think tonight of the many uh, 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 battle cries throughout history that have promoted and have pushed people forward when they didn't think they could go any further. And tonight, the church has a battle cry. We have a battle cry for problems. We have a battle cry for sicknesses. We have a battle cry for circumstances. When it seems like we can't go any further, there's a flag that we can wave. There's a battle cry, and there's several battle cries tonight, but I want to focus in on this one, if you would. And it starts with Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I'm sorry. It starts with Romans, the fourth chapter, verse number 20 and verse number 21. Romans 4, 20 and 21. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Our battle cry tonight, since we started out with Latin, let's put it up in Latin. Our battle cry tonight is Dio e Capace. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not. Dio e Capace. It means God is able. Can you say that with me tonight? Dio e Capace. For all you Italian people tonight, Dio e Capace, God is able. That's our flag. That's our banner. That's our battle cry. It doesn't matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It doesn't matter what the situation is around about us. We're determined tonight. God is able. Dio e Capace, God is able. God will take us through. God will deliver us. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. And I believe that my God is able tonight. Can I get a witness that God is able. Amen. I believe tonight that God is able to keep every promise that he has ever made. Can I get a witness tonight? I'll raise my hand and tell you that God has made some promises that he hasn't fulfilled yet in my life. But guess what? D-O-E Capace. God is able to keep them. God is able to do it. If I will trust him or believe him, God's going to bring it to pass because nothing is too hard for God. Can I get a witness? Uh, nothing is impossible to them that believe. Do I have any believers in the house tonight? Woo! Hallelujah. D-O-E Capace. God is able. God is able. Nothing is impossible. <coughs> And God will keep every promise. Uh, The Bible tells us in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, looking at about verse number 33, uh, verse number 23. And while you're turning to that tonight, somebody took the time. And it wasn't I, but somebody took the time to count the promises in the Bible. The God said, you know, and promised shall. There's over 3000 promises in the Bible that God made. Now, when God makes a promise, it's good. <clears throat> when you and I make promises sometime, we mean well. Don't raise your hand, okay? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Have you, <laughs> I'll get you in trouble. <laughs> Have you ever made a promise that you didn't keep, that maybe you couldn't keep? You wanted to, but something happened, and you just weren't able to do it because we're human. But God makes promises, and he keeps them. Now, listen to this. <clears throat> he doesn't always do it in our time. Are you with me? You see, when God speaks, he speaks in the future. He doesn't speak in the present always. He speaks in the future, things that are going to be, things that are going to happen. And we have to believe him in the present with faith that God's going to bring it about in the future. That future may be the next second. That future may be the next minute. That future may be next week, next year, or next decade. But God keeps his promises. And he's never late. (laughs) Can I get a witness? And he's never late. (laughs) Amen. God is able. Amen. He's able to keep every promise. Uh, D.O.E. Capace, I believe that God is able tonight, that God is a provider. Amen. The Bible says they call him Jehovah Jireh, and that means what? God, our provider. God will provide. He's promised to give us remnant. He's promised to give us clothing. He's promised to give us food. Amen. He's promised to take care of us. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. God knows just where you are. 
and God knows just what you're going through. He knows the trials, he knows the tests, and he knows the struggles. He became man so that he could feel the pain that you and I feel. He became man so he could feel the rejection that you and I feel. He became man that he could feel the disappointment that you and I feel. Amen. God knows all about it. You know, many times we talk to people and we try to, you know, people say, oh, how are you feeling? We try to explain to them. And they say, oh, I know how you feel. They don't really know how we feel. <laughs> they mean well, <laughs> but they really don't know how you feel. But God knows. Because he was there. He bore all of our infirmities. He bore all of our pain. Amen. And I believe tonight that God is able. He is a provider. The Lord will provide. The Lord will make a way. Amen. Abraham and Isaac. Amen. He was taken up to the mountain. The Lord said, Abraham, this is what I want you to do. He promised to make him, amen, a father of many nations. And he was taking his son up to the mountain. And on the way up there, his son turned to him and said, Dad, we have the wood. We have everything we need for the fire. But where is the sacrifice? He didn't know that Abraham was ready to sacrifice his own son at the commandment of God. And you know what he said to his son? He turned to his son and he said these words, D-O-E capace. Well, he may have not said those words, but he said, God is able. Mm. God will provide, he said. God will provide. And sure enough, didn't God provide in the, in, in the Bible as we read it? God will always provide, and he's always just in time. Amen. He never fails. We look at Daniel, the third chapter. God is a provider. Verse number 17. I love this story, and I love this verse right here. And uh, the three Hebrew children were talking back to the king, and you know the story, so I'll save time. But they said, if it be so, our God whom we serve, anybody serve God in this place tonight? Our God whom we serve. It makes a difference to God that you serve. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Come on. It makes a difference to God that you serve. They said the God that we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. The God that we serve, he is able to deliver. God hasn't changed today. He's still able to deliver. It may not be a fiery, physical furnace, but brother, sister, you and I go situations that seem like sometime I'd rather go through a fire. <laughs> sometime I'd rather walk through the fire. Are you with me? Come on. Then some of the situations and some of the things that we face and the dilemmas in life. Uh, amen. It would be easier just to walk through a fire sometimes, I think. But I want you to know, regardless, God is able. He's able to deliver. He's a provider. Amen. In Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse number 19, the scriptures tell us, our God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your need. Whatever the need is. Do you really believe that? Anybody? I mean, actually believe that. Can we just praise him for it right now? Do you really believe it? Let's just praise him for it right now. Let's just take a praise break and praise. Jesus. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. He owns it all already, and he will supply what we need. We've often preached, and we've often said, and you've heard it uh, 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 repeated many times, God promised to supply our needs. But, everybody say, uh-oh. <laughs> he doesn't always supply our wants. It's, I mean, we've heard it preached many times, but it's the truth. And sometimes we forget. God knows what we need before we know what we need. <laughs> Come on. And he will supply our need. Amen. God is able to supply whatever that need is. If it's a financial need, if it's a physical need, amen. If it's an emotional need, whatever it is, God is able. He, he can do it, amen, if we'll just believe him and wave that flag. God is able, God is able, uh, amen, shout that battle cry, God is able, God is able. I'm going to believe him till he does it. I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to keep holding on to it because I know that my God is able. Can I get a witness? God is able to provide. Dio Capace, amen, God is able to save, amen. God is able to save. Now, I know that sounds like just a, a blanket remark. But God is able to save your family. God is able to save my family. Amen. Don't give up on your mothers, your fathers, your sisters, your brothers. Is that all right? Don't give up on that person you think they may never be saved. I, I can name your names right now of people I thought would never be saved. If it had been left up to me, I said, there's no way they're ever going to come to church. There's no way they're ever going to be baptized in Jesus' name. My uncle was an alcoholic. Uh, he had a, 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 a terrible, t he was the nicest man you'd ever want to meet when he was drunk. Okay, but when he got sober, amen, he was a terrible person, and uh, he used to, uh, uh, well, 
he had this thing about I was the only one in my family that went to church, my grandmother, but I was the only one, the, one of the children that went to church. And so whenever I come home from church, he'd give me a real hard time about it. And many other times that he would take and, and give me a hard time. <laughs> he used to take me, I was about maybe 10 years old. He would take me to the bars with him and make me sit on the bar stools just because he knew that I went to church and didn't drink. And of course, I was only 10 years old, but that I love God. He was a mean person. I thought he will never come to church. That man will never go to church. He hates God. He hates me. He hates everything about God. But you know what? God is able to save him. And he was baptized, had the privilege of baptizing him in Jesus' name before he died, amen, of cirrhosis of the liver. God took him, but before God took him, God gave him the opportunity. The reason God gives people an opportunity is because in the book of uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse number 9, it says, he is not willing that any should perish. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants you to make it. Turn to your neighbor and tell him through your mask. God wants you to make it. He's not, he don't want to leave you behind. He doesn't want to leave your husband behind. He doesn't want to leave your children behind. Come on, help me out. God is able. It doesn't matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter how deep in sin they are. It doesn't matter how far from God they are. Come on, somebody help me. Do you believe that God is able? Dio y capace. God is able to save them. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to wave that flag. I'm going to keep believing God. I'm going to keep asking God. God is able. That's my battle cry. God is able. I'm going to keep believing him because I know what my God can do. Even God is able to save. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Amen. Dio y capace. God is able to reverse. Everybody say reverse. Reverse the situation and the circumstances. Let that sink in for a moment, okay? When we think it's all lost and it's all over, there's no way out. God delights. <laughs> Hallelujah. God delights when your back is against the wall. Not that he wants your back against the wall, but he delights when you don't see any way out. And you say, Lord, help me. I know you're able. God goes, just pulls us right out. Are you with me? He delights in it because God is able. And he can change and reverse circumstances. Lazarus had been dead four days. <laughs> Dead as a doornail. He, he was dead. There wasn't any doubt about it. He was wrapped up. He was mummified. Daddyfied, maybe. He was mummified. He was wrapped up. He was in the grave. The, 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 the stone was in front. There was no way he was coming out. It was over. But you know what? Jesus came on the scene. Aren't you glad that Jesus can reverse the circumstances? There's nothing to... Is God able? Come on. God is able. Oh, wave that flag. God is able. Let him hear the battle cry. God is able. Oh, hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God is able. Hallelujah. And he said, roll away the stone. And he said, Lazarus. Woo. Is God able? Come on out of there. I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to give you life again. Though it may be dead, God can make it live again. What a mighty God we serve. God is able. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's able to change things around. He's able to take things that look like there is a loss and turn it into a win. Can I say that again? He can take things that look like they're a loss just let that sink in. I'm not trying to be political. Just let that sink in. But he can take things that look like they're lost and turn it around and turn it into a win. Joseph. Look at Joseph. Brother, he didn't do anything wrong. He tried to do everything he could right. But it kept getting worse and worse. They lied about him. They cheated. They did everything they could. Put him in jail. But you know what? God just reversed it. Whoosh. Whoosh. Brought him out of jail. Amen. And he was second to Pharaoh. In the whole land. God can take what is dead. God can take it looks like it's impossible. God can look like there is no way out and just reverse it. Aren't you glad God can reverse things? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Amen. Look at Job. Amen. A good man did everything he was supposed to do. Amen. But God allowed everything to be taken from him. But then he turned around. He became one of the wealthiest men in the land. With twice as much and twice as many. God can reverse things and turn them around. Look at Stephen. Are you with me? Come on, Stephen. You might think, but they stoned him to death. What's so good about that? They stoned him to death. But God just reversed that situation. You know, if I'm going to go, I'd rather go living for Jesus than go living for the devil. <laughs> Amen. And there at the feet of, uh, 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 at the feet of uh, Stephen, if you would, was a man by the name of Saul. 
who became one of the greatest men in the New Testament, who held the garments of those men and women that stoned Stephen to death. God took, look, took what looked like a defeat and turned it into a victory. Don't raise your hand. Do you have any defeats in your life right now? Does it look like defeat? Come on, are you with me? You don't have to raise your hand, but do you have something that looks like it's a defeat and you felt like, man, there's just no way. The devil's told you it's just not going to happen. It's over, man. You might as well throw in the, uh, uh, just give up. Just wave that flag. Woo! God is able. Dio ye capace. God is able. God is able. Doesn't matter what it looks like. God is able. He can turn every win, amen, every loss into a win. He can turn things around. He can make a difference tonight where you and I don't have a way and can't make a way. God is able. He's able to strengthen. He's able to give hope. Amen. And he's able to make a way where there is no way. I'm just about out of time tonight, but I just got a feeling that somebody here would just like to shout to the devil, God is able. Can I get you to stand with me just as we close? I hope that, I know this is nothing new, but I hope that I've brought it home to you tonight, that we make that flag, that we make that battle cry, that we make that banner a part of our everyday life. When you get up in the morning, I don't know what's going to happen, but just wave it. God is able. Hallelujah. When you're driving down the road, I don't know what's going to take place, but God is able. Amen. The kids are all mad at me. I lost my job. I don't know what's going to happen next. God is able. Just wave it in front of the devil. Just wave it in front of the devil. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, as, 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 let me say this in closing. As my girls were growing up, and stay with me now, okay? As my girls were growing up as children, sometime I don't think they understood English. I would say no, and it was like a foreign language. I would tell them, I want you to do this. It was like, we don't understand. What, what language are you speaking? You know, sometimes I don't think the devil understands English. So would you help me tonight? Could we just say it in Italian tonight, just in case you don't understand English? Just sh- or, or shout it out in Spanish tonight. Did they put Spanish up there? Okay, God is able in Spanish then. Even, could we just shout, just in case you don't understand English tonight, I want to tell him in Italian. Dio y capace. You know, the Italians have a way of using their hands. <laughs> I, I'm not, hope I'm not offending anybody, okay? I'm believing him, and nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's give him one more hand, praise, as our pastor comes tonight. I believe he wants to speak to us. Oh, my goodness. That was amazing. I'm encouraged. How about you? Amen. I am encouraged. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If we could go off live for just a couple moments, I'm going to allow you to be seated. I just want to share something with the church.